Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies, and I've got yeah, this, is, this is Andy Cook. Yep, this is Andy Cook. This is the second episode of talking about the RC10 GX, which is a uh, replica which you can get as a conversion kit from Andy from yep. Grand Prix 3D. Grand Prix 3D, yes. Now, the first one we rebuilt the gearbox. Okay, so we pulled apart the car, so we're talking about maintenance and going into a bit of um building the, the actual bits right so rebuilding showed, as well yep. yeah so it showed how this was sort of cut out of its um the little winglet parts or the uh the brim as it's printed yep so i've got that all done there and now we're going to move on to the rest of the chassis okay mm. so the shocks are off shocks are off. what should we do gearbox we can uh, set the gearbox aside put this over here yep all right so get your weight over there cool. so let us Pull off the mainly up the suspension arms, the mounts. Uh, we'll do the, the rear and then the front. Yeah. Okay. Let's pull this out a bit. How's that? Bit easy to see. All right. Yeah. So I can check all of the the wear rate. So this car's done about six six or seven race meetings and a bit of testing. Okay. So we'll have a look at the um like the sort of slop. The rear uprights I've just swapped over to to new ones because um, they were slightly different design. Okay. So they're quite new. Um, but I did notice. I think there was a bit of a bit of play in the hinge pin into the the rear arm yep um not too right, bad a little bit yep. there yeah so like a little bit of like wobble in the axle okay result, yep but it'll be a combination of, of everything of course like bearings and the, the uprights yes. in the arm yep and then on the inside uh same sort of thing so it's pretty pretty good actually mm. yeah okay a fraction of play there which might be not much more than it was originally Okay. Pretty cool. Cool. Yep. All right. So, so what are we going to do? We're going I'll to pop these off, which don't look. I'll use pliers, which is naughty, naughty. Naughty, naughty. What naughty would you naughty. normally use? I'd normally use a little special tool that I haven't got. Um, the, the stamped middle yeah, one, which is like with, a, the, with the U U shape. Yeah. So, the, so you the, can put it in behind the ball and, um, and then pop it out and lever it off. Yeah. Oh, okay. And it's sort of the two sides go either side of the ball and, yep. and press on the actual ball cup. It's less painful. Yeah. It's, less um, chances of stretch. Less chances of scratch. mangling the poor little <laughs> original ball cups. Yep. But if you do do it carefully with pliers and not let it scrape and stuff, you can, yep. you can sort of get away with it. Okay. Okay, good old trusty Phillips screwdriver. I've had this since we used to go racing together. Really? And probably before then. That was a long time ago. Yeah, Eagle Eagle Racing. Wait, Eagle, that, that's an old name yeah. now, isn't it? And this has got the greatest Phillips head tip. Which is I'm it? I'm sure it's got a, a good spec. Um, specification for the okay. front right yeah and it fits Tamiya screws and these associated screws absolutely brilliantly well you expect it to be gist don't you Japanese something standard industrial standard yes is that, is that right <laughs> let's go with that I wasn't saying anything else I was like <laughs> all right no definitely Japanese yes yes that's right yeah so yeah so I've hung on to this uh the screwdriver yeah for a, a long time. Well, it makes a huge difference with these alloy screw screw, right? Because if you don't have the right size screwdriver, they strip out pretty quick. Yes, you can kill them very quickly. Uh, these ones are stainless steel. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty special, I, isn't it? Yeah, I provide them in the uh, little hardware kit that we can we sell as well. Okay. So, so the hardware kit is an optional thing? Yes. Yep. Um, that's probably answering your question from last episode. Yep. Which I forgot about. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I didn't provide the hardware in the actual kit due to the fact that I didn't have enough for every single kit and a lot of people have their own hardware. Yes. Uh, but I do recommend it strongly. I guess it makes it easier, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, so some of the lengths are very specific. Yep. And it, um, it makes it easy because they're all there, ready to go when you're building it. Yep. And it also avoids like having too long a screw, which then mm -hmm. might break apart. Um, so yeah, so there's a little suspension arm there and yep. the, the CVD. Okay. So these, these are longer CVDs, which were from, where are we? From Custom Works, um, they're quite long ones. A medium. So the, what, these are a, a third party, are they? Yeah. So they were they were these guys. Oh, okay. I don't know if I've got that in the shot, but yep. yeah, Custom Works. They're the steel medium ones. Medium. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It says medium. Right, if okay. they just had a list. Yeah, fair enough. Um, whether it's a typo or, or what they call it, I'm not yep. sure. But yeah, but they're a bit long, unfortunately. Okay. So, but. I made some special hubs to accommodate them for now. Right. Uh, but we've got uh, JC Racing Products in the UK. 
Yeah. They produce the Universal, which is a very good replica of the original. Okay. And they are sold out, and they're producing more now. Okay. Which is really cool. Okay. So probably January. So they when, might you, be when you say similar to the original, you're talking about length and also length the overall shape and, the and look. design. Yeah, yep. the actual Universal. So these are CBDs, of course, but yep. the actual original Universals that okay. the Sami used and yep. a lot of the guys used. Yep. So yeah, they've created replicas of those which look awesome and work well, um, as far as I know. Yep. And are the exact right length and everything. So they'll have them in quarter inch and three sixteenth axles. Okay. Um, probably yeah, January onwards, I believe. So I'm going to get definitely get some of those when they're available. Yep. And uh, cool. they will fit nicely into the like standard uprights. Yep. And I'll also do the standard uprights printed as well if people because they're a bit bit hard to to source. Well, these early cars are quite easy to pull apart, aren't they? Because you don't have to worry about pills and all that sort of stuff and bits falling yeah. out. So they're quite simple. Yeah, very basic. You just got the, the yep. mount and the, the hinge yes. pin. And I always like the, how deep the cutouts are here to accommodate the, the arms because of the droop. Yeah. Well, that's actually um, unique to this prototype. Right. Yeah. The production RC10s didn't have that. Yes. Because what they had was... The hinge, the hinge pin was sitting outside of the mounting holes for this mount. Yep. Whereas in this prototype, they moved the hinge pin from the outside right to the inside. So extra long arms. Yeah, so yep. you had super long arms. So the outside hinge pin's pretty much the same position, mm -hmm. and the inside's lengthened or moved, and therefore right. the arm length, uh, pivot length is, is lengthened a lot, um, okay. and very similar for the front end as well. Yeah. Cool, so let's... Oh, another tool I've forgotten to bring. Because there was a time when, um, I think it's with the Super Dogfighter too, uh, where they had their um, car with extra long arms, and they're talking about the amount of tire scrub, longer arms having a less tire scrub. Yeah, I think there's a, quite a bit of geometry in terms of the angle that the arm goes to. Mm. So a longer arm goes through a smaller arc yes. for the same amount of travel at the wheel. Right. I think that's right. Well, I, I trust compared it. to a shorter arm. Yeah. Yep. So, like the physical wheel movement up and yes, down is yes. the same. Like that's a, yes, a, a yes, constant. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. So the shorter the arm, yep. the bigger an angle it'll make yes. between where it starts and where yes, it ends. Yes. Um, so yeah, having that as a less of an angle then gives you what less wheel scrub, mm -hmm. I believe, and then whatever the <laughs> the performance or handling benefits are. Yep. After that. Because that, that was all the talk um, with the wow. ultra low profile tires as well at the time. Yeah, well they had the, the big controversy at the 89 Worlds was the 2.2 inch rims. Yes. And and the Yokomo had those. Yeah. And that means that then the tyres were a different design and lower, uh, a smaller sidewall and all those sort of different characteristics and benefits. Yes. So we can see as we pop this one open. I saw a yeah. little... We have a little thing there. Yeah. So in the hardware kit that I sell as well, it comes with um, a few shims. Yep. And I do a little bit of a housework. A little here. bit of a cool. It's very zen. Yeah, how's that? I'll hold on to these so they don't get flicked off the. Yep. Off the bench at the same time. I'm probably flicking this all on myself, but you won't notice because I'm wearing a black top. We'll keep the floor clean. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. Okay. Okay. All right. right so let's be clearer. Yep. Yep. So I've got these guys. Yeah. Yep. So, um, you can just. There is a bit of a gap the way I've designed it, yep. so a bit of a gap in there, a bit of play, yep. and you can just sand it lightly on the arm or the or the mount, yes, uh, just to give enough clearance for a shim. So provide some shims and yeah, in that hardware kit, or yes. use your own whatever whatever's available. Yep. But remember, they are one one eighth inch. Okay. Which is not three mil. Not three bigger. mil. Three mils will not fit, which is really annoying because <laughs> everybody has three mil shims. Yes. yes. So yeah, so you got to have one eighth, one eighth shims because the, all the hinge pins and everything is one eighth. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, okay. what have we got here? What is that? And then, good old pliers again. Yeah. You good. must have a, a very good technique for doing this because this, this well, can be a bit I have tricky. A, I have a very good tool which is side cutters that are filed down and have a little notch in them. Oh, really? That goes nicely over these. Uh, which is sitting nicely at home. Right. So. Oh, you're doing alright with these. I'll, yeah. I'll be super careful. Yeah. And. Use, use pliers Ding. Yeah, they're my super cool pliers that come with the Pr Prusa printers. Ah, oh, there you go. They provide some tools and the pliers. So. I remember all the old kits when you used to put them together. All the E-clips used to be held together with a bit of tape. You that? Yes, that's right. Do they still the do that? Ones. They don't do that anymore, do they? Um, I haven't seen it. Oh, I haven't built a no. car with... Well, it probably doesn't make sense these days. Um, 
I'd probably just get them all taped together and just slice off it like a little yeah a roll like sausage roll a, a section mm. yeah that's right it would be like a what a meter probably a meter roll and <laughs> slice out slice out a few yeah yep. cool. good memories so yeah so had a few shims here actually got yep. a really thin thin shim there which is probably not necessary really um, that goes in between the hub and the, the arm yep but you can do that if you really desire because you've got the force coming so it's the front of the arm yep so you've got the force sort of pushing that way on the hub yes um, is that right yes and that's and that's trying to pull basically pull, push the car along mm. so I think I put a little very thin 0 0.01 shim yep in between that yep but you do have to sand it out a bit I've basically got the, the tolerance of here is close enough that you don't need a shim yep but if you want one then you can yeah just sand it away a fraction on okay. both sides I guess it's up to and it gives it like a nice little yeah. nice little bearing so you have less friction oh yes probably makes again no difference but oh, makes it feels you feel nice good. Yeah. that's right yeah. and then I think I have the thicker ones just on the outside under right. the C-clip okay. just to take up the slack yes. which again is not essential but yeah. makes it nice cool so, so you're going to be changing these arms yeah so let's change oh, you will the arms be changing arms, so. so I'll keep those I'll, 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 I'll can brush Give it a bit of a brush, brush anyway. Yeah, I could put those on the shelf as like number one arm. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be worth dollars in the future. Maybe. Or not. <laughs> Give it enough time, everything's worth more money. Yeah, vintage. Especially if you can call it vintage. Yeah. Alright, so there's one of those arms. This one, yep. Yep. I'll pop the other one out. Some more shims. Are we keeping these? Um, let's swap them over as well. Yeah. Okay. Pop that over here. Cool. So there's that one. And I need to hinge pin out of that. And pop that hinge pin out. I'm really surprised at how tough these are. It's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. And the, the polycarbonate material inherently has characteristics of flex. Right. Um, not a lot, of course. Yep. Yeah, so it hasn't got the brittleness yep. that um, other plastics can have, well, especially 3D printing plastics like PETG and PLA. Um, some of the some of the tough PLAs and some of those are pretty good these days, but inherently they are quite a, a hard plastic, mm. which, which means brittle, whereas the polycarbonate has got the, what's it called? Not rubber, but, um, you know, the plastic flex characteristic to it, which means for this sort of usage mm, they're perfect give there yeah toughness yeah so the impacts they'll, they'll bend a bit yeah. um but yeah when you actually try and try and move them you can probably probably see a little bit of movement there as i twist it yeah it's a little bit well, i mean it's yeah, pretty, probably can't pretty see it, resilient you can, you can feel it yeah but it's not nice mm. and stiff in terms of not flopping around on the race no, car that's right so that works really well yep and then print them at that 45 degree angle so you get the the best compromise of you know strength throughout all of the different areas and, and yep. angles of the part yep. especially around the hinge pin holes yep. of course because they're like the physically the smallest bits that would break first so on the original these were machined were they uh no i think they were molded oh really yeah so okay. it was nylon um i could be wrong <laughs> i remember them as being because they never used these again did they the I think they were similar, but they went to black ones. Like yeah. They were black, I think, from the 90, probably 91 Oh, really? Onwards. Oh, okay. Yeah, what they've been. So the, the RC10 Graphite, RC10 Graphite would have come out with, I think, nylon arms. Yep. From memory. And then after that, what did they go to? A B2? Oh, I don't know. My history with RC10 isn't that great. <laughs> I should know that by now. <laughs> let's, let's add to B2 or something around that okay. era. Um, they were modeled in black. Right. But I believe that was still a similar material. Okay. Yeah. Just call it. Associated gurus out there can correct me. Yep. Yeah. That's cool. Right. So, yeah, so it shows up the dirt a lot, I guess. Yep. As you can see. But it but it's does, got that it, classical yeah. raw version nylon look. Yeah, for the vintage color, mm. it's, it's perfect. Um, yeah. Because I had. What have we got? Oh, the yeah the front the front uprights yes so those little c hubs and the, and the steering knuckles oh that's like, original is it yes yeah, so they're originals yeah oh, so a they're spitting image yeah, for the color the c hub and the steering block is original yep. and the arm is this stuff of course the yep. printed so yeah other than maybe a bit of dirt or discolor discolorization yep they're so close that it's it's, mm. a, it's amazing yeah it's cool yeah 
So yeah, we should be able to do all sorts of original parts going forwards if people want them. Mm. Like all the battery cups. Yes. That's all printed in this stuff. Yeah. And they look very, very similar to the originals. Yeah, cool. Mm. Okay, so we're not using that. We're gonna get some freshies. Let's get some freshies. Cool, so I'll show I'll show here. We've got the parts almost as they come off the printer. Yeah. Um, because I do print them at 45 degree angle. Yep. They have... <laughs> you, I'll you get that later. Away. You, you know where you can get another one. That's a funny bit. I'll get that later. Yep. Um, Alright, so there's the arms. Yes, there's the arms. So, when they come off the printer, they've got a whole lot of support material because they're sitting at a, a 45 degree angle. Right, okay. Whoops, which is there. Yep. Um, so, yeah, so they've got all the, like, basically filling in the, the air gap because you can't print in midair, of course, because yep. of that annoying gravity. Yep. So then, yeah, I ripped that off. So it's like basically a way to sort of, with the pliers, just kind of compress it and that kind of crushes and then, then sort and of And then like just peel off? Peel off. Okay. Much. Yep. Um, I can see the layer lines there. Yeah, so you can see them on the, on the angle. Yep. Yeah. So after I do that, then they go, they go straight in the kit. Okay. But what you need to do, actually no, they don't go straight in the kit. I drill them out. Oh, the man with the drill. The drill's back. Here we go. Oh, pointing it, pointing it <laughs> out. Yes. What have I done to you? Okay, so what are you drilling out? Yeah, so drill out the hinge pin holes. Okay. So this takes um, a little bit of work from the builder as well, because right. what I do is I'll drill them out. Yes. So that, you know, deliberately made under size. So I drill them out with a 1 8 drill bit. Yes. Like so. Same for the other ones. So is the material so resilient that when you drill through it, the hole's still not at one eighth, sort of creeps back? Um, no, it'll pretty much cut it out. Oh, will. Eighth, yeah. Okay. Um, but I found the one eighth drill, which is either my drill's a bit worn or it's just it's a drill, not not a reamer. Um, right. It's a little bit too small. So if we oh, see okay. here, yes, um, it'll be yes too hard to push it through. Okay. And that needs to be the pivot as well of the arm. Yep. So they'll be quite tight in the in the blocks. Okay. In those um, blocks, which I'll grab the new ones out. Yep. So yes, yeah, so the arm has to pivot over that hinge pin eventually. So what the each builder will need to do is, which is probably pretty common with a lot of, you know, building a car. Yes. You you'd ream out the um, the holes. Yep. So same same for these. Yep. So I do I do drill these before I put them in the kit. Yep. We'll just do those again for fun. Yep. But they will be probably a fraction too small. Yep. Still, so we'll ream them out. So that's that's that guy. So we'll do the so others. I'm intrigued. I want to see how you ream it. So you're just using the same bit. Yeah. So this. So drill it all first with the yep. one eighth. Yep. So that's how it'll come in the kit. Yes. It's a one eight this reamer. Is hard to find. I think I bought it from you. Probably. Yeah. I think um, I think this was from you guys. Okay. So yeah, it's 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 easy to find a three mil or a four mil reamer. Yes. Um, one eight reamers. This is pretty much the only one I could find. Right. Yeah. So okay. I this one. Um, I do need to modify it actually. I found that the first slot, yep. cutting slot, is a long way from the tip. Yep. So you got to like push the whole tip through the um, plastic. Yep which is an ideal before it starts cutting. Yep. So I might actually dremel off the tip. I think it would be a yep. good little tweak or customization to that. Yes. Um, so what I do first is I use a standard 3 mil reamer. Yeah, just open it up slightly. Yeah, so yep. you can sort of use this as a bit of a kind of drill slash opening it up. So you can see that goes through pretty easily because I've drilled it at one eighth already. Yes. Um, so I'll use this. Probably, still just taking off a little bit. Probably, yeah, the way it's not quite meant to be used, which yep. is to sort of push it on the sides a bit, but try not to bend it, of course. Yep. Just yeah, just a side. gentle. Yeah, doesn't yep. have much, doesn't have a lot of force because it's pretty sharp. Yep. So I'll do that a bit. Yep. Um, to 
depends. I kind of need quite a, quite a bit of this, but it gets there pretty quick. Okay. Well, I guess it needs is to ensure that your suspension is going to be smooth without any slop. Yeah, so, it's super critical. Of yeah. course, with any car, you need you need that. To, oh, look at that. You need that to fall. Yeah. So at the moment, it's I can, I can push it through pretty easily, yes. which is good. Yeah. But it's not falling yet. Yeah. But you got to get that resistance out. Yeah. Okay. So I just make that big enough so that this, which is a bit hard to to push through. Yeah. But I move that. <laughs> move the monster drill <laughs> before, before I drill falling down on the ground and exploding. <laughs> have another massive crash. Yes. Um, yeah, so it's a bit oh, okay. hard to push yep. through, but then once you start getting into the cutting parts, yes, it becomes it a bit opening easier. up. Yeah, try, try and keep that on camera. Yeah, yeah, and then go all the way through, so you get a nice straight line through the hole. Yes, through both so holes. So it guides there. itself. Yep, and I normally do this by leaning on the bench. Hey, okay. <laughs> I normally do this by pushing on oh, the side push of the bench. Oh, push on that. Oh, okay, yeah. give it a bit of um, which is not going to look that good on camera. Yep. So I'll, I'll keep going with this. Yeah. Well, I guess go. if that front end was just polished slightly, you'd be able to get that in much easier. Yeah, because it's going like you can see there, it's sort of this yes. tip bit, which is not no cutting bits on it. Yes. Is just basically forcing its way through the the other yeah. side, which is not not ideal. Yeah. So. Well, maybe even just um, dremeling a slight notch, like an angled notch in the end, so mm. it does start cutting. Yeah. And start pushing through. That could work. Mm. Just watching this like. Get it in one side. You can see you're stabbing yourself there. Yeah, you have to be pretty careful. So I've done, done that side a bit. So yep. let's see how that is. So oh, yeah, okay, there that. you go. Yeah, yep. that's what so you want. Pretty much needs one, like with this actual one eighth rim. Yes. You don't, you don't need to go backwards and forwards. It's just through yep. ones. So just basically, you just want the arm to hard. hang <laughs> by itself, right? You don't want yeah. any resistance. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So a tiny bit of slot there is better than too tight, of course. Right. Okay. Um, I'll just cheat a bit and do a bit more with the 3mm. So what are you suggesting we should get some more of these 1A 3mm? Yeah, this is going to be a hot property I reckon. Right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, I just enjoy this gearbox which we built last time. Look pretty good. Yeah. A few people have bought the casing just for the for their world's re, -re car I think. Okay. Or for, for some other RC10. Right. Yeah. So I sell uh, the casing separate, right? Of course. Okay. And yeah, a few people have um, picked that up for their whatever RC tens. Nice. And I used it in my first. Actually, that was one of the first prototype parts that I made for this project, was the the gearbox. Right. And I used that on my World Three Recar initially for testing. And it's yeah, still got it. Hmm. So that um, that worked well for that. Yeah. So I could so I could develop that while I was still creating. <coughs> creating the actual rest of the GX prototype. Yeah, it's cool. Nice. <laughs> oh, man. man. It looks like you've got like palms and cheese all around here. What's going on? Yeah, there's our like spaghetti. You boil up some water. <laughs> we'll make some, some plastic soup. Whoa. Oh, did you like that? Culinary that, that, that? I could serve that up on our, our next date. Yeah. Candles and plastic soup. Plastic candles too. Whoa. That'll be good when we light them. <laughs> oh, getting sweaty after a... Oh yeah, a bit of a workout. Bit of ream, ream working. I'm not, because I'm not doing anything. Oh, you got to do the other three. I do. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, yeah, that's that's feeling pretty good. So if I grab the... Okay, so you want it to fall on its own weight. Yep. So yep. it'll just what you want. fall there nicely. Okay. Awesome. All right. There you go, so that's one. Yep. So we're gonna do these are all drilled in, right? Yep, they're all drilled. And we'll use the the three mil. The three mil. Okay. Do you want to have a go? I'll give it a go. Whoa, awesome. At the same time, so I'll check this. This might need to be rimmed out a fraction with the three mil also. But um, yeah, the mount and the pin I usually leave that a bit tight. Okay. Because that can like stay that stays solid, <coughs> solid. Yeah. As the arm pivots around it, of course. Yeah, I've always got two points of slop, haven't you? Yeah. So you minimise the slop in that one. So you need this hole to be just enough so you can sort of press it in and out without too much force like that. Okay. So we'll <laughs> see how I go with this one, eh? Yeah. That's, so it did. It's going to be tough. Oh, so you actually took a lot off, yeah? Yeah. Try and get as much out as you can with this, because um, it's. 
Because I've been really gentle. Yeah. Oh, don't be gentle. Don't be gentle with this one? No. Alright. Yeah. Alright, let's try that now. I'll go fetch our other, other parts. Other parts? Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay. So I'll just keep going along with this. Yeah. Let's see. There we go, I'm back. Oh, jeez. You're quick, aren't you? Yeah. Right, let's see if I can get this. Didn't go far. This one eighth in there. Yeah. Well, it is tight, isn't it? Yeah. Takes a bit of force. Okay, so you got to get it to a point where it's going to start cutting. Actually start cutting, yeah. And then probably just do one side at a time as well, I reckon. Yeah. Because otherwise you've got the, the friction of both both holes at the same time is a bit much. Oh, okay. Where, where am I? I'm not sweating yet, but I can understand why you're sweating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's good work, so, yeah. It's poking it in. Okay, so I'll do the other side. Yeah. So we got while we're preparing those, we've got uh, to show these uprights. We've got so they're um, replicas of the original. Oh, yep. There we go. Uh, just printed, of course, in the same material. So they're exactly the same as the grey ones, right? Uh, these grey ones have the bearings offset. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. I see now. Yep. Yeah. So if I, For the if different I line them up, grow shafts. Yep. Yeah. So the these um, off-white ones are exact replicas of the original, yep. and then the grey ones are same, like same pivot points. Yep. Otherwise, uh, just the bearings moved out about two and a half mil, I think it was. Right. So that I could fit these CVDs in. Yep. Okay. Mm. So with with these and the world's re re drive sh uh, CVDs. Yep. Uh, it was. Dog bone would just go into the outdrives of the diff, and through its you know maximum suspension travel, it'll be right on the edge. Well, it's a bit dangerous, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So then you get that you know, bit of a crash, a bit of a hit, and it flexes and it pops out. All right. So this is just slowly getting in. I've got these guys here, which are so actually interesting. As when I was researching the design of these arm mount parts, yeah, I couldn't work out if it had any inboard toe or not. Oh, and I looked at lots of different photos, and different photos looked like some looked like they did, some looked like they had a little bit, some looked like they had a lot, some looked like they had none. Yeah, and then um, I wound up getting enough photos that made it look like there was basically zero toe. Right. So I went with that. Okay. As well as the fact that they're inboard of the bolts, so there's very little room to play with in terms of angling the hinge pins yep. and the hole. So I actually went with zero inboard toe, and all of the toe, the three degrees of toe, is in the outboard part of the arm. Okay. Because the hubs are zero. Yep. They're just standard. Yep. Um, yeah, so the three degrees in the. How do I put the arm there? Yep. Three degrees is in the outside of the arm. Yep. And then the in inside is uh, zero. zero. Yep. And it's got three degrees of anti squat. Oh, okay, yep. Yeah, yep. so it's three degrees um, inclination of the yes. hinge pin. And you can see these, maybe maybe you can see these. Yep. Uh, will be so thicker, sort of thicker at the front end, yep. And then thinner at the rear end to allow for that um, anti squat angle. Yep. I think I've done this the hard way. Yeah. Well, there's no easy way. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I should have taken a bit more material off of the three mil. Yeah, how about they? Start that on these. Oh, this one's coming out. Yeah. Yep. Coming. And you probably could do this, like if you didn't have a reamer or, or didn't want to get a reamer, you could probably do it with the drills. Yep. Just have to get the right sort of size drills and keep so working at it. Try. Mm. I've put this one in there. How's that? Still a bit tight. You can probably just run this through it a bit rather than the one. Then this one? Yep. Yeah. Just if it needs a tiny bit. Either way, you could, you could um, oh, thank you. do it with that. 
So I might take off a, a smaller amount to just yeah. sort of like move it around the, the hole. Yes. It's undersized, of course. Because you want to take off a little bit from every single part. Yeah. All right, so if we try that. Still a bit tight. Or maybe the one eight. <laughs> Almost there. Yeah. yeah, it's getting better. Yeah. I mean, that, that's really fine even, tuning it, isn't even it? Even with that, like, it's going to wear a fraction when yes. you start running it. So. Yes. Um, although it didn't seem to have a lot of slop in it after six meetings or so. Yeah. So it won't wear heaps, but, you know, you could check it after a run or two if it is a fraction tight. Yes. Just recheck them all and then see if they've loosened up or not. Yes. So I remember the reamer I got ages ago for a touring car. Mm. Didn't have the cutting etched in like this. It was the whole thing had, had slots in it. Yeah, that so sounds it actually, like a better design. Yeah, so it mm. felt like the whole thing was a cutting blade. Yeah, because I think this is this is all one one eighth, right? What we call the actual, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, it doesn't make sense to me. Like you're forcing the one eighth rod through the hole that's not one eighth yet <laughs> um, before it gets to the cutting sections. Oh, it's getting there. Which is yeah, uh, makes it a bit hard. But yeah, I reckon if, um, yeah, probably just Dremel off the end. Yes. Just chop the end off it. So yes. you're, you're immediately cutting. Yes. You could sort of get it started gradually. Might make it a bit what easier. What if you Dremel and just a line across here? We can get like a... Yeah, just like this. Oh, a, a vertical sort of sort in Yeah, line. like that. And then just chamfer the edge. Yeah. Ooh, maybe. Oh, that's a good idea. We can patent that idea. Yeah. We could have DJ's <laughs> special <laughs> reamer with Rage. cutting edge technology. <laughs> Cutting edge. That's funny. I wrote that myself. Did you? <laughs> you got it on a note, haven't you? <laughs> wrote it down. Yeah, you yeah. yeah. prepared it. Yeah. Well, I guess there's always a tedious part of any build, right? And this is probably the yeah this critical is part, the slowest bit. Yeah. yeah. Other than painting. <laughs> oh, the painting bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that takes a while. It's, um, well, I guess this is a good demonstration for everyone who's getting one of these, so that I understand that this is this is well, not doing anything wrong. It is just something that you want to take your time doing. Yeah, well. definitely. And I've got um, an online manual for this. Right. And I'm hoping I'll put I'll put notes in it. Hopefully, there's a bit of information about doing oh. this sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't use any force at all. Yes. Okay. Yep. So yeah, that's. Um, Definitely good to see it on a video like this, of course. Yes. Um, see it actually being done, as opposed to pictures or... Oh, look at that. Notes. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so that's what we want. Yep, that's nice. And also these parts in general, um, because they are printed at a 45 degree angle, yes. some of the edges uh, are not like beautiful and smooth and sharp. Yep. Uh, they're a bit rough because of where the, where the printing starts. Yep. So you can always um, cut that with a, a scalpel if you want, mm -hmm. or just sand it right. okay. to clean it up. So not essential, of course, but makes it nicer. So so especially if you're doing a, what, what's it called, a queen of the, oh. queen of the well, race, race, <laughs> race queen, race queen. No, no, no. Especially if you're doing a race queen. It's not a race queen. It's a shelf queen. A oh, shelf queen. Yes. Yeah. Especially if you're doing that, <laughs> then yeah, you might want yeah really nice perfect edges. So you yep. can sand this stuff. It seems to sand pretty well. Yep. Especially the light color, so it won't show up the sanding too yep. much. Um, so yeah, you can do that to clean up the edges if you if you don't want those little rough rough bits. Yeah. I think it's going to need a bit more three. Yeah, do you want to do that action. one? How about start I'll on one? Yeah. Oh, oh. What are we doing? Oh, we're swapping I'll take that thing. one. Oh, you take that one? I'm taking that one. Yeah, cool. Right. That's the easy job. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Quite therapeutic. Yeah, it's nice. See, yeah, it's just doesn't even go in. <laughs> <laughs> have you already reamed those with the three? I have. Oh, okay. I did it secretly when you weren't watching. Oh. When you were fighting with this thing. Yes. Yeah. I wasn't paying attention. I think I did. I might have got three calls away through them. Okay, so you can sort of see a bit of material coming off. Yeah, it's pretty right. gentle. It's pretty, uh, pretty sharp. Oh. Even though it's tough when you're pushing it in, it's obviously doing something, right? Yeah, because then it's yeah, it works out that um, ends up that it moves freely. Yeah, you can't really see much material coming off when you're doing the eighth one, but like that's taken most of it off. Like, like that's gone through now. Yep. Yeah. That's so once it's gone through, like this, this is where it's ready for the eighth, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's got to be. Oh, we almost be pretty close. I mean, does it go right through? Nice. 
think it's still got a little bit of resistance still on bit, it. Yeah, so I might have to run, yeah. run through that one. Yeah. Mm. It's not bad. Okay. So that does knees a little bit more. Okay, so we'll leave that over there. Yep. Then what else you so got there? What else got, I got to do? Um, this one. Has oh. this one been done? This has been done, yeah? That's been done. Yep. I think. Yep, so that's good. That one's finished. That's finished? That's finished. Okay, that's finished. Yep, and then this one. Oh, that's good. That one's probably fr oh, pretty close. I'll just be gentle. Gentle. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. Cool. Oh, I'll just borrow that. Yep. And I'll do this. Is it this bit? Yes. That's that one. Yep, so they're all done. That's the old stuff. And then yep. that guy's still hanging around. Here's the front. Yeah, it's all this stuff you can like clean up and sand as per any, any kit or car or model. Yep. To make it as nice and smooth as you desire. Okay, so that's all the way through. Yep, that should be pretty good. Yeah, it doesn't need much with the, the one eighth. Yep. Um, I'll remount these little mounts as well so we can slide the hinge pin in with a bit of resistance. Yep. I wonder how many uh, reaming videos, demonstrations have been made. Not enough. Not enough? You're going to have to do it some more? <laughs> of course. <laughs> It's reaming, what are you talking about? Oh, well, there we go. Not going to be able to get that out without fires. <laughs> Everybody look away. Uh, there we go. Alright. That's what we're doing here. Gonna be gentle this stuff, aren't you? Yeah, that one doesn't need much. It's just sort of three once. I do, I need another workout. Oh, no, no. Don't have to go to the gym tonight. What? What do you mean? I never go to the gym. <laughs> they don't oh. know that. <laughs> well, they do now. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Don't need those oh, look at that. Oh, beautiful. Does it move? Oh. That's what we want. Yep. Alright, so it's good. That's good. Okay. Yep. Alright, so we've got our arms. See if it goes through that one. That should be press fit, but so it doesn't have to fall, of course. But it's a bit tight. A bit tight. Because we need to be able to get it Just in there. Just a little bit in the centre, I think. Yeah. Yep. I'll move this parmesan over here. Parmesan? Yep. yep. We'll get the meat sauce later. Bit of tagliatelle. Tagliatelle. I like the, the chunky stuff. Oh, this is this is a bit tight. Oh, this is might, tighter. I wonder if that needs the eighth. Let's see if I can get the eighth. Yeah. Eighth action. I wonder if that can go through. That might be a bit hard. The nylon is a bit softer. Oh, is it? Okay. Then the um, polycarb. Yep. Oh, yeah, that goes through nicely. Okay. Let's try that one. All right. Yeah, it's, it's good, I think. Yep. It's got some. It's got some yep. Uh, bite. Yep. But you can still push it out or push you it through can, to yeah. assemble it. It's, it's a little bit tight, but I think it's good. I think that's good. What would I know? You know everything. <laughs> All right. So we got that. We got that. Got the army juice. Oh, there we go. How's that one? All right. So it's getting dirty already. I think that feels good. It's good? Yep. It's got a bit of um, resistance. Need a bit more. Force it in. Yeah. I reckon it's good. Perfect. There we go. Okay, so we've got uh, suspension mounting blocks for the rear. Nice. They're all been reamed out. Yep, they've been reamed. Okay, how about I give this a little bit of brush? Yeah, okay. That's um right, so give that's got real run. keel or dirt and canola. But it's surprisingly clean though, isn't it? Yeah, I, I probably just brushed it off quickly after the race, but not much. That would have been that would have been it after the last race day. After I collected your frog with it. Did you know I remember? And I had so many, oh, so, so many not very acrobatics oh. with the frog. <laughs> <laughs> it was early in the day, I think. Oh, was it? Yeah. Might have been mid air. I can tell you the frog is difficult to drive. <laughs> and just, I will, just I will I thought, believe you. <laughs> just when I thought I could line it up for the jumps, yep. it, it goes sideways. It goes somewhere else. Yeah. Yep. Sounds like a frog. I still got it around. It's a pretty good effort. I, I was a bit dejected when the, uh, the Euro truck went around faster than ah, a frog. Yeah. 
That was making a very um, <laughs> just interesting noise, that Euro truck. It was just scraping yeah. its body all around the place. Yeah. And Brett just had a big smile on his face. <laughs> Alright, so I think that's sort of, yeah. sort of good, eh? What do you Still reckon? Do you reckon we stuck to it? Put the rear back on or we rip the front off? So what else we got? Like, probably won't take it apart, but you got yep. the rear bulkhead. Yeah. Um, so when you're assembling this, it's good to pre-thread the two bolts that go into the bottom. These two? Yeah. Yep. Um, especially if you're using the original alloy, alloy ones. Yep. Um, pre-thread them with um, steel, ideally. Yep. The stainless ones. There would be less chance uh, of yeah, chopping out the heads. Quite tight, yeah. And you yep. can you maybe use a bit of grease on them as well to cut the thread. But, yep. Um, so make that quite tight because you need them to, to stay nice and tight and not yep. loosen off. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I think for the for the rear bulkhead, um, the shock tower just bolts to it with the four countersunk screws. Yep. Make sure you get the right lengths. So there's two different lengths. Um, I think it's oh, what is it? Five sixteenths. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's different things. This is there. Three eighths or something. Yep. Yeah. So the the longer one goes at the top because it's got a bit more material. Yep. And the shorter one at the bottom. So you just make sure they they should end up about flush with the back. Yep. Okay. And then the standard yeah ball, this original associated balls go into the new like far inner hole. Yep. Um, and they need to go on, of course, before you install the gearbox because you can't get to them. Okay. Any special tricks with the front end? Front Maybe end. we should do the front end, yeah? Yeah, we'll rip apart the front end. Yeah, yeah, why not? And then we'll start putting it back together again. Yep. Good plan. So we'll Let's pop that over there. Where's that from? I don't know what that was from. Alright, so here's the front end. It's from there. Got all those bits, all the shims, and the parmesan. Yes. Let's get rid of some of that. Put the parmesan. There's a bit more parmesan. Yep. Cool. Okay. Yeah, so the cars are very, very modular, isn't it? Yes, especially the front end. So oh. that's, um, that's the best way. So we'll pop, pop these ball studs off the steering with my special patent um, pliers technique. Oh, I need those pliers. Yeah, it's gonna catch. So, it's gonna catch on. <laughs> so these um, turnbuckles, they're mm. gonna be available. Soon, yeah, aren't they? so we've got some pretty exciting um, like components and parts that are being produced. So yeah, yep. Gary Sturdy up in Queensland. Right. A lot of people will probably have heard of him yes. and his uh, son. Yep. Uh, Chris, I think. Chris. Yes. Apologies. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. One, one of the top races up in uh, or oh, in Australia. Yep. And uh, he has been very excited about this uh, this car, mm. uh, which is super cool. And he's actually making some parts. Cool. So he has made some titanium turnbuckles. Right. Which are. Right, you got them yet? Now available. And I. Oh, here we go. Right in front of me. Oh. Yeah, so he's made. Um, so the, the Lunsford titanium turnbuckles were replicas of the originals. Yes. Like retro style. Yes. And Lunsford has unfortunately just retired. Yes. And therefore no longer available slash difficult to find mm. you know, leftover stock. Yep. Um, so, a lot of people can't get them anymore. Plus, we have a very long two and a half inch steering link, which is not in the original kit. For like a yeah, they did a, some yep. kits for the the world's cars. They feel like nothing. Yeah. You sure they're not made of air? Well, it's special titanium air. Hey, what is it? Yeah, it's like if you weren't looking, you wouldn't even know that you're holding something. No, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, so he's made these um, titanium turnbuckles to replicate the Lunsford ones, which were to replicate the originals. Right, okay. Which is super cool. So yeah, so it's grade 5 titanium yes. with a little stainless nut. Yep. And it's got the proper 440 thread, of course, mm -hmm. and reverse thread on the, the other end from, yep. from the nut. Yep. Uh, so yeah, so the ones that are on the car at the moment, these are the Lunsford ones, mm -hmm. and then these are the, the sturdy ones. They look sturdy. Yeah. Yeah. They're awesome. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. So he's, he's just made the first batch, so I should get them this week. Yep. And lots of people have already bought them. Okay, good stuff. So they'll start shipping out. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, it is a bit scary, you know, when, when you've got a project together and then certain components are yeah, starting to... Yeah, you can't get them. ...really, really get, get scarce. Yeah, so Gary's he's also going to look at doing hinge pins. Right. And even the motor, gold motor plate. Okay. And the gold uh, motor oh, really? guard at the back. Well, that'll, be, that'll take a bit of effort, won't yeah, it? Yeah, so he's currently looking at getting those produced. And yep. so we'll see how that goes. Uh, fingers are crossed that that'll all work well. Okay. And nice anodizing. So we'll see if we can get the anodizing close. Mm. If it's not perfect, then pretty close. Yep. Yeah, especially this uh, the rear motor guard on the back was 
not very common back then. Mm -hmm. It was released, I believe, for the graphite car because right. it had the graphite chassis and didn't have the didn't have that built into it, of course. Yes, like the alloy ones. Yeah. So they released that piece as a separate component. So there's not many of them originally made. Oh right. Okay. And they're super rare and super expensive now. Right. If even if you can find one, they're just ridiculous price that you wouldn't want to pay for. So mm. um, he is looking at making those. Wow. So that'll Good be stuff. that'll be awesome if that can be done. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of people will be very happy. <laughs> cool. So right. let's pull the front end off. So so what have we got there? So we've got a couple of chunky screws, have we? Uh, not very chunky, actually. No. Oh, little ones. No, just little four uh, forties. Okay. Where are we? Yep. So we've got the countersunk screws. So the back two ones are slightly longer. So yep. they're the, whatever they are, I don't know, 5 sixteenths, 7 sixteenths or something. Yep. And then the front two are a bit shorter. Um, I've actually got longer ones in at the moment. And I put a nut on top, which is not scale replica of the original. But I found for racing, it saves you having to tighten them all the time. Okay. Yep. So I'll grab... Oh, because you've got this. the nuts on that yeah, side. Yeah, so I've yes. got the little 440 nuts on, on the top. Yep. So I just tried that the last race meet and that worked really well. So for racing, I would recommend that. For replica... Oh, so it doesn't have that. Screen. Yeah, it yep. doesn't have that. Okay. So you just use a lot shorter bolts yes. and they just go flush with the top of that yep. front bracket effectively. Yep. Cool. So there we go. Oh, better catch it. Can come off. It is. You got it? I got it. Oh, there we go. Okay, so there we go. We've got our front end come off as one sub-assembly and there we have the chassis and you get a better view of the the tougher re reproduced um, steering bell cranks mm. yep there they are yep okay and, all right yeah, so we've got so that little animal there they're the gray ones compared to the uh to the natural color ones yes yep. yeah look cool yeah Okay, so you got this fella here. Yeah, so let's let's pull him apart as well. So a similar idea, just we'll swap the arms over. Yep. And and the bulkhead. Yep. So what comes up next? Let's do the little so clips. So these front hinge pins. Yep. The ones that Gary's gonna produce for us will be almost exactly the right length uh, in terms of not too long. Yep. The truck ones that I've used here, like yep. from the RC10T, uh, maybe one or two millimeters a bit too long. Okay. So that, so what I have done is shimmed, uh, shimmed the back. Shimmed the back. It. Yep. And I've lost the circlet there by the look of it. Um, so going put, too fast. Yeah. Oh, that, definitely the reason. <laughs> yeah. not, not all the crashing. So that front um, aluminium support bar, yes. is that off the truck, is it? Uh, no, that's custom made, so it's oh. in the kit as well. Okay. Yeah, so Berserk uh, is making that for us. Right. Also. Okay. So yeah, so he's doing the CNC for the carbon and the fiberglass. Yes. And, and this little piece. Okay. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, cool. It does look very similar to the truck one. Right. Uh, the truck one's a bit wider. Yep. Uh, it's the same sort of idea. Yeah, nice. Mm. Okay, cool. Yep, and that's a, obviously the scale replica of the original. Yes. Of course. Okay, so we're just so, going to yeah. punch these through. So, yeah, pop them out. Um, might be a few, sh few shims here and there. Yep. So yeah, so I just put a few extra shims in these to sort of space them out because yep. they're quite long. Uh, yeah, the, the Gary produced ones will be one. I remember one or two mil shorter, so it needs slightly less shims. Yep. Okay, so this one's going. This one doesn't have the e-clip on the end. Right. That's lost okay. the e-clip. Yep. This one's got a bit of mud hanging off it. Whoa. That keeps the e-clip on. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. I forgot to install the mud on that one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Alright, so that's off. Cool. Oh, oh. more shims. Oh, I've forgotten about that. Is there in between maybe? Are yeah, so I put oh, those. Okay. Um, to, uh, uh, there's no tolerance in there for them. Right. But if you do want to put a little baby, they're a very thin zero, you know, 0 0.01 shim yep. as well. Okay. Um, if you want to put them in there, you just need to sand back the bulkhead a fraction. Yeah. Like you can sand the front the front face off the bulkhead. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, to leave it enough room for those if desired. But again, it's, it's a, a minor thing that's not essential. Okay. But it makes you feel good because you've got super nice smooth suspension, especially when there's force on it. Yes. And you've just got a nice little shim as the as the rotational area. Mm. So you haven't got two big bits of plastic rubbing on each other. No. Rubbing. Rubbing. 
So we're going to be using these existing um, stop axles. Yes, they're all the same. So you yep. So we'll pop them off the arms and. Let me see if I've got your techniques. Yeah. I haven't got any with me, but I've got hundreds of so clips of home spares. So. Oh, okay. If it if it lands so in the corner them. of the studio, it's we'll, going to stay there forever. Yep, it can stay there. <laughs> Actually, this. This is the best tool. Ooh. This launches them further than you ever see. Oh, awesome. Can we hit, <laughs> hit the back wall? Oh, it guaranteed. The, is it the front wall or the guaranteed. back wall? Oh, I don't know. It's one of them. It's a wall. It's a wall. Okay, so I've got that. That's out. Oh, nice. Alright, so you've got some shims in here as well. Oh, man, I put shims everywhere. You love your shims. Yeah. What a tight fit. Yeah, and sometimes these. the shims jam onto the, onto the, groove. the slot and the groove. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so you got another shim. Oh, just on the front, yeah, just to take up. It looks like a spacer there. Yeah, it's a little shim there. Yep. Just to take up the end play of the. Of the, of the hinge pin. Hinge pin, yeah. Yep. Yeah, probably not not essential again, but. That stops it from no, flapping about. For some reason, yeah, I just don't like having the gap there. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> okay, so I've got that. So we're not replacing this bit, no, are we? We'll just leave that. Yeah, okay, so, so we're going to. pop show. They're all original parts anyway. Right, okay. Those. I might try and replicate these in printed parts, oh. see if they're strong enough. Okay. Might have to beef them up a fraction. Yep. But we'll, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Because they're also a little bit hard to find. Right. So these are inline axles too, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, inline. Uh, I Wait, can't were they remember. commonly offset back then? They did have offset ones, yeah. These were off the trucks, so I bought the RC10T oh, okay. trucks and they yes. just came straight off that. Right. Whether they were different, maybe. Oh. But yes, there were definitely versions where it was offset, especially in the, the first RC10s, I'm pretty sure it was offset. Yes. Uh, I don't know when, the, what models had what versions. Mm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm. All right, so you got that? you've got the... Yeah, so I've got the, the front bulkhead and the tower. Yes. And here I've used Yokomo ball ends with the five mil ball, threaded ball, which bolt through from the other side with a little Phillips screwdriver okay. and all of that's to just have scale replica of Masami's car yep. so it's not for any sort of performance or other reason yep. um, purely purely replica I just realised I took off the wrong e clip <laughs> <laughs> just getting so good at it that's the yeah. that's the wrong the wrong pivot point <laughs> okay so yeah so it just please on, yeah to make them look like the originals so Yoki are they? yeah they were, I'm pretty sure they're Yokomo yep. as in he drove for Yokomo, so yes. I'm guessing that they were Yokomo. And I found these ones which were Yokomo ones. Yep. Maybe not the exact type that the original used, but... Oops. But they got the look. Yeah, they look, look pretty similar. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Not exact, but very close. Yeah, and all the others that he, he used the original associated white ball cups. Yeah. Okay. So this is from Aaron Dafina's uh, special supply. His collection? Yep. Yeah, hoping to be able to get some more of these, maybe re repro versions in the near future. Yeah. So it's, uh, chatting with J Concepts a bit to see if see if they're able to produce them or not. Oh, okay. That would be a good option if, if they can create them. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yep. So we'll okay, so these yeah, are... So that's the little bulkhead. Yep. That's cool. And the bulkhead that I've dropped a couple of times and keeps me missing is this yep. one. So yeah, see we've, okay. got the, we've got the brimage on this again. Yes. And so you're just going to treat that the same way as the... Yeah, get my get my beautiful new uh, nine steps blade. <laughs> yes, of course. That might go missing later. Yes. <laughs> I expect it to. Yeah, yep. cool. Yeah, it must have like, fallen in the bin or something. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, there we go. So just fold that again yeah okay so doing the same sort of thing as you did with yeah, the uh, just, gearbox halves just trying to get yeah a little bit of a starting spot yeah so i can chop that out yeah and yep same thing yeah get rid of the flashing so a slight angle so it's a slight chamfering as you're cutting through it, it gives a cleaner edge yeah so we get close to the actual material yeah less clean up later yeah i was doing this with a lot of the nylon parts in my original grand prix type l car right and I was doing it all before and like putting it into the kit already cut. Oh, really? And it was taking me way too much time. Oh, it would do. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So more recently I've gone the other route of 
giving this uh, pleasure to our lovely customers. Yes. And it means I can package up the kits and do everything. Yes, well, I guess, you know, quicker. it's it's all about um, production time now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, time's the, the commodity. Yes. Especially with, even with the printing, because you know, yep. 3D printing process is physically pretty slow. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the, the material is part of the cost, mm -hmm. and then a, a big, bigger aspect of the cost is really the time. Mm. And machine time. Yes. And then of course you got human time. Yes. So you got the got the wages. Yes. So you've done this before. Yeah, so I was doing like dozens of kits. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I was getting reasonably good at it and not cutting myself. Yeah. Well when you cut yourself that's the, the best way of learning because you don't want to do that again, do you? No, yeah pretty quickly realize that that's a bad bad idea. Yeah. Then we suddenly start fainting because you're running out of blood. Oh, is that why that happens? Probably. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Okay. There we go. How's that? All right, so there's the, uh, the brim will cut out. That was pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if you're only doing one, it only takes a minute or two. Yeah. And uh, if you're doing 93, <laughs> I suppose it <laughs> takes 93 time, right? minutes, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's, um, yeah can be time consuming when there's a, a bulk. Yeah. So I'm guessing you're going to be re reaming this as well and to the same extent that you're not going to be reaming it. Yeah, super loose. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we'll probably check it first. So I think that's I missed a bit there. There you go. Oops, back in the camera. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you don't want yeah. to miss that bit, right? Because that's going to be yeah, resting so flat against the, the carbon. On the chassis. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So with this, uh, we can sand him. So yep. yeah, so that's especially with the holes there as well. Yep. Good to just sand that, get rid of the burrs. Yep. So the the flat section flat resting sits, yeah. against the chassis. Yep. It'll sit flat there. Yep. Okay. And then that's the print down on the print bed that side. So that'll, so be, that'll nice be perfectly flat. flat. Yep. Yep. That's where the, the shock tower seats. Yep. Of course. And then the. So the same sort of thing. You can trim around the edges if you want. Yeah, you could probably sand it, and make it all nice and perfect. Yep. So every time you look at it on the shelf, it looks brilliant. Yep. And then... Oh, he's got the drillage out again. Get the drill out. Okay. And let's go go back, not the 1 8th, because that will make it way too big. Yep. So you're going to the 3 mil. Was it the 1 8th? I've forgotten now. 3 mil. Let's what do you mean? The, oh, the, the good drill. Actually, I think it is 1 8th, come to think of it, because we've got 1 8th pins. Yeah, this will be way too small. I take that back. I take it back. <laughs> so here's one I prepared earlier. Right. <laughs> the one that was on it. Yeah, so this yep. will be not much needs to be taken out. So, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. I drill these before I put them in the kit, actually. So. Right. Okay. So it should be almost ready to go. Right. Okay. So we've got a. Um, I'll stick a long one yeah, in there. Yeah. Right? Chuck a long one in. See what it's like. It's pretty tight. It's tight. Yep. So yep. I reckon we use the three. Three more ream each. Three mil, just to. Make it a, yep. a firm press fit. Yep. Okay. Or a semi-firm partial press fit. Huh? So crazy. Okay. So I do that one. Yep. Let's do this one. There's not much in it between one eighth and three mil. One eighth is like no. three point two, is it? Uh, it's less thing. It's about three point one seven. Oh, is it? Yeah, okay. three point one six, three point one seven. So yeah, it's not much, and that's like what's that? Probably two tenths. Hmm? Was it one or one or two tenths of a mil difference? Mm. Um, so it's not much. Right, so it's still a bit tight here. <laughs> hey, why, why are you moving away? What no. do you think I'm going to do to you? No reason. <laughs> Well, hit you, it's not going to do that. Yeah, it's that only a, it's a blunt object anyway. Which bit you think I'm um, going to hit you with? Which end? The, the blunt end or the, oh, the, blunt end the or big the... blunt end? Yeah. <laughs> right, so that's that. Well, maybe that's why the, the cutting bit starts further down. So if you stab yourself with the end, it's just a, oh, it's a, a blunt through the metal. Oh, maybe. Mm. Alright, so let's see how we go on now. It's feeling better. Do you think it's still too tight? Uh, you want 
Yeah, don't want to play. Just really to assemble it. Yep. I reckon that's... It's all right. That's all right. Yeah. Oh, it's the other one. That one's too tight? Yeah. Yeah, that'll be good. That's all right. Okay. So the so other one needs a little there. bit more work? Yeah, because I found, I think early on, um, I drilled out these this piece to... Oh, yeah. Maybe yep. that one needs a bit. I drilled it out quite a bit looser to make a pivot. Yep. And then I realised I don't really need that. So, right. Yeah, so it brings in more slop. So um, this one... Same as the back, holds the hinge pin tightly. All right, let's try that again. Still a bit tight. Oh. What? Nothing. <laughs> All right. It's going to need a little bit more reamage. Yep. Try for a cent. Yeah, I found this um, alloy part cops, a, cops the brunt of nose dives when you uh, dive it off a jump as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I found that was actually bowed in slightly. Oh, really? After, um, yeah, good good big nose dive crashes. Yep. Yeah, so it's only adding in, so you just bend it back straight. Yep. Or put it on the other way around. It's amazing how much um, uh, stress they take because, I mean, they're, they're copying the brunt of when you hit the wheels on things as well. Yeah, yeah, you've got like a kilo and a half of, you know, big lump of high velocity uh, object mm. uh, as it goes cartwheeling along the track. Yeah, or even those like nose dives off a jump is a sudden stop. There'd be a lot of, a lot of force going through them, I'd imagine. Yep. How's that? Is that too tight? That's. Um, be okay It'll be a little bit hard to assemble but yeah did you want to have another, have another quick go at it yeah give me uh, more not much yeah a little bit that should do because really just to sort of press it in yes as we go so that can yeah, you don't want to be yeah too be tight too so hard that's to annoying to, yeah pull apart um, but that's otherwise we want it to be firm okay okay cool. that's good i think that's good yeah Okay. All right. So it's all no about way. just a reassembling. Probably reassemble. Yeah. So the rest of the rest of the chassis here will no need to pull this apart for now. Yep. But, um, it's all what's interesting, all basic stuff. The yep. servo at the moment I've just been taping down. Yep. Uh, it does move a fraction. So, right. Uh, the original was taped in. Right. But if you wanted to, you know, for racing, you could you know drill a rock, holes in the appropriate spot for your servo and yep. you know, count and sink screw it, it in the bottom and, yep. and screw it in as per normal. Yep. Yeah. So you could do that. Then it could be a bit more robust for racing. Uh huh. And then that's probably about it. Yeah, we've got yep. these little the rear standoffs we we're talking about before. Yes. Um, so they're the same polycarbonate material printed, ones, yeah, and they're, yep. yeah, they're just sprayed with some metallic silver to make them look all clunky like the like alloy ones. Yeah. But uh, at the moment, with no coast racing, uh, we're looking for them to produce them. Okay. As uh, as an option part that would be available through those guys. Yep. So same as the front standoffs, they'll do the these rear ones as well. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and they do the body mount, uh, the wing mounts also. These wing posts and the little orange buttons that are on the wing. Yep. So yep. Guys. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, so hopefully those rear rear alloy options will be available uh, in the in the new year also. Cool. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to be screwing the let's reassemble. So that's okay. all disassembled. All right. Yeah. So, so slap let's that see if I can on. remember how to do it. What do you mean? You know. I've probably done it a couple of times. <laughs> Actually, more to the point, let's see if I can find all the, all all the, the bits. screws. Yeah. Right, here we go. Yep. Does it look about right? <laughs> Should be about right. <laughs> I think I used silver, silver ones here because Masami's car had silver. Oh, all right. Okay. In these positions for some reason. So. You should probably grab silver ones because that's all you could find. Probably all you could find. <laughs> yes. Oh, these are the right ones. Yeah. You just make sure they're symmetrically matching. Yep. Oops. How about not do that up super tight? I'll put that on in. So who actually put this prototype together? Who put so, the prototype so together? I believe Associated did right. originally, whether it was in conjunction with Masaki right. or how much uh, involvement he had early on, I'm not sure. Yes. Uh, but I believe it was, yeah, like Cliff Lett and the Associated team. How about I not screw that into the wrong hole? And the Associated <laughs> team. Um, yeah, originally sort of designed and developed the car. Because they all use Yokomo wheels, right? And Yokomo tyres. Yeah, well the the Yokomo, basically the team associated drivers yes. uh, were provided those from the, the Yokomo team. Yeah. Like through Masami, I believe. 
Mm. Well, maybe not all of them actually, because some of the drivers didn't even have these RC10 GX prototypes. Right. So like Craig Craig Drescher, for example, yep. made the A final with the original graphite. Okay. RC10 yep. graphite car. Yep. And also Rory Carl as yes. well. He he didn't get a prototype, I believe, back then. Right. And so he was one of the sort of top drivers at the time as well. Yep. So he was, uh, I think he ran, would have run the original graphite yep. car as well, same okay. as Drescher. Yeah, so then I think uh, a number of the top drivers would have got the got the funky pink wheels. Yep, 2.2s. Yeah, which was the, the big controversy. Yeah. <laughs> cool, so we've got that guy. Okay, so we've got the tower back on. Yep, yep. it's a, probably a rear hinge pin, so let's chuck it over there. Yep. So now, <clears throat> let's do the, the tricky here. bit. So we've got, where are we? The tricky that? bit. We've got arms. Yep. And, well, tricky bit in terms of remembering where I put all the shoes. Ah, okay. It's kind of a, a process of trial and error and working out where you want to put them and all yes. sorts of stuff. So there's no... Well, that's one of the inner ones. I was missing an E-clip. Yeah, so that came through the back. And yep. let's see if that goes on. Oh, the other thing, if it needs it, you could sand the faces. Yeah, often... Oh, I found I've done that a bit. Sand the faces of the plastic just a oh, little I bit. Oh, I see. Yep. Just to get rid of any burrs. So not yep. really taking the material off them too yep. much. More stopping of, it from catching. Yeah, more of getting the little printing printing burrs out of there. Yep. Okay. Just to make it nice and smooth. Yep. And you can do the same same on the bulkhead. Yep. So it doesn't take much. Nah. Nah, it's sort of like not taking material off it as such. Yep. It's more just getting rid of the edges that are sticking out. Okay. Have got that one? Yeah, I'll give it a go. Cool. And then again, you might be able to see here with all of the, it's like the bottom edge of the, where the printing starts as it's printing on the 45 degree angle. Yep. Uh, is, is a bit rough. So sometimes if I get really excited, I'll basically slice them with a scalpel to start with. Yep. Take off all the, the chunky bits. Yep. And then, then sand and it then nice sand and smooth. It. Yeah, then yep. it looks really cool. Like a nice edge, like you get on the top edge, which is really oh, nice yes. and smooth there. Yep. yep. Okay. All for looks, of course. So do that. All right. So put that part way in. Yes. Yeah, so what have I done here? I think I haven't sanded this block, so I'll leave the shim out, like these really thin ones. Yes. Okay. I'll leave that out for now. But yep. if you wanted to like sand back that front face, yep. um, Make it and nice leave and a bit of a gap. Yep. Yeah. So like actually create a gap. Yep. Okay. Uh, but yeah, as it stands, it's um, pretty close fit. Yep. Okay. So that goes through. All right. So push. And push. Same for the other one. Yep. Uh, what do we do there? So we've got some chunky clips, and then those guys. Awesome. All right. So yeah. what? So we got the yeah. The so aluminium here brace on the front doesn't matter too much, but you can. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, I don't think it's critical, but just to take up some of the extra slack of this of these long hinge pins. Yes. Put a little shim on there. Yep. And then uh, then the brace. Yep. Okay. And then and clippages. Uh, potentially another shim. How much, how much have we got? Oh, okay, for one of us missing an e-clip. We've lost the e-clip there, haven't we? Yep. So I'm going to push those on a bit. Yep. So I'm probably put one shim on the front. So you want to get it to a point where the e-clip still goes on fairly easily, right? Yeah, so not, I guess, not putting fighting tension against, on it. Yep. Yeah. Because then as it, if it rotates a bit, it can sort of ping itself off, I guess. Yeah. I'm talking of pinging off. There you go. All right, you ready for this to go launching? Catch it, catch it here. Oh, pressure. Pressure's on. Oh my god. Is it on? Almost. Oh, no. oh, oh, there it is. It's sort of loose, is it? That one? No, nah, not quite on yet. Oh, isn't it? Oh, there you go. There's a for oh, push it on. It's like <laughs> jumped on. That's right. It's ready. Cool. Okay, so, so what are we doing? We're doing another. Same thing there? Yep. There's that little one. And then the dirt clip. That one should stay on nicely because it's got preloaded dirt. It's got the gummy bits. Which yeah. Oh, that's a special canola glue <laughs> on the track. Is it true that it's canola that's coming out of fish and chip shops? Sounds like a good story. It does, doesn't it? I have no idea. <laughs> might be one for. Might be a question for Simon. Yes. Yeah. Actually, I'm, I haven't done it on these cars, but. I know sometimes uh, with these like e clip style, especially yep. the like one end only, yes. <laughs> um, I'll put like a bit of epoxy 
Oh dear. Yeah, so when it's out of the car, of course, so you yep. just have just the clip on the on the hinge pin. Yep. And then just put a little tiny dub of epoxy on the outside end. Yes. And make sure you don't get any on the inside. Yep. Or wipe it off. And it just holds it in place. And yeah, it stops the clip from coming off, of course. Well, right, okay. It'll never come off again. Yes. Unless you cut it all away. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's basically it'll stop one end of the clip coming off. Right. Okay. Yep. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, so that's um, a handy one. So then if it's yeah, the back one comes off, then it's it'll still stay in there. That's 11. Oh, it's 11. Okay. Not one. All right. <laughs> I'm going to be worried there. Yeah. So you can see this, uh, probably won't do it now, but... Yeah, it's still a bit tight. Yeah, a bit tight. Okay. So it probably needs, like what I've done on the other one, which yes. is, I would say, rather than taking material off the arm, yeah, I'll take material off the, the face off of the this bulkhead. bulkhead. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Until it's a nice loose fit, and yep. or you can put little little shim in there as well. Yeah. Cool. Well, I guess it's just trial and error as you're building it, right? Yep. Okay, so what are we doing now? Stub yep. axles? Probably stub axles back in. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah, so these ones are actually 15 degree, which is quite extreme. Right. In terms of 30, 30 degree kick up from the chassis. Yes. And then it's basically a minus 15 uh, on the caster block. So, yeah. So a net 15 degrees. And I think standard's more 20 or 25. Right, okay. So you'd have 30 minus 5 or 30 minus 10. Yep. And these are 30 minus 15. Right, okay. Which I actually found were quite good for some reason. I liked it. Oh, good. Yeah, it might be just a personal driving style or preference, but yep. for whatever it was, me or this car, um, I tried the, I tried, I think there was zero offset, so it gave me 30 degrees caster. Yes. And that was undrivable. Yeah. yeah. It was just oversteering and traction rolling and doing all sorts of weird stuff. Right. Which is probably too extreme. So yep. I would like to try a, a 15 and a 20 at some point. But I did like the, not sorry, the, the 20 and the 25. I did like the 15. So this is an like option, is it? Uh, the, oh, the original car probably came with a 20 or a 25. Yep. This were off the RC10Ts I got. Yep. Uh, so I don't know whether they were standard or, or swapped. I'm assuming they were probably standard from the original kit. Yep. But quite that's extreme, right, yeah. So very, very minimal caster as a result. Yep, that's correct. Okay, so you're going to put in mm -hmm. a washer? No? What do we have there? I think we had, yeah, we had one. Yep, and then an the E-clip. One chip. Um, yep. One chip. One chip. One, one shim. And an E-clip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So these ones are sort of thickish? Yeah, they're the thick ones. Okay. I yep. did have a, a thin, these thin ones, which we'll leave out, um, in between the bulkhead and the arms. So right. I'll probably take too much time sanding away and rechecking oh, yes, it yes. For, for today. Yeah, fair enough. But that would be a, a good little tweak to do. Okay. Because that's where so. all the force would probably go, where it's... Um, yeah, pushing back onto the yeah, I'm pushing back onto the chassis. Yes. As it's, I guess, you know, driving into things or hitting things. Yeah. Well, not hitting, but yeah, you know, the the force of the the grip when it's going back. forward. Yeah. Yep. All right, so that's clipped in. Yep. Awesome. Right, let's get another one here. That's in. In. Okay. Nice. Let's clip the put the top cam links on. Yep. So clippage then. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Cool. And okay. I think that's it. Let's bolt it back on. Alright, so that's gonna go back onto the chassis. Yep. What did I use? Probably these guys. All right, so there you go there. So you're gonna do, you're gonna screw in the back ones first because you got nuts on the front, yeah? Yeah, I'll make it a bit, bit easier. So we'll get it located, located first. Yep. In, in the rear holes. Yep. You'll leave them off a little bit loose. Can we put in the front ones? Or yes, I'll, oops, that one's a bit tight. I'll leave that loose. Definitely. Naughty, naughty. Got You're on call. Yeah. <laughs> Must have been on silent. Hey, you've been in the movie theatre where it tells you to turn off your phone. That's, I didn't see the, the sign on the intro. Oh, that's probably because yeah. we didn't have one. Yeah. It's like super unprofessional, isn't it? Oh, just, just a little bit. <laughs> it's alright. 
Cool. All right. And so that means because you're being able to thread in, you're just going to screw on those nuts from the outside. Yeah. So normally yeah. those would use the shorter screws for the, the scale look. Yes. That just are flush with the top. Yep. Um, for racing. I'll put the little nuts. Well, I won't. I'll try to put the little nuts on top. There we go. We've got that one. Takes a bit of dexterity, doesn't it? Yes. I need to get some. <laughs> cool. All right. Okay. How's that? Yep. Pop that up again. Yes. Clamp them up. So yeah, you sort of got to balance the. It's kind of threaded into the nylon. Yes. So, so you don't want to overdo it because yeah, you don't totally strip turn out those. Strip it. So it's more doing a nut up than the than the bolt at this point. Yes. I just nip the nut just a fraction, but mainly the nut. Okay. Um. Nut and then bolt. we'll just clip these back. The steering rods. Yep. They clip on. Oh, it's really bad. Well, it hurts. <laughs> That's good, another good use for pliers. If you Is get it? lined up nicely. Not sideways. Uh, not, not crooked. I don't know. Yeah, there we go. Nice little hole in the Oh, jeez. <laughs> Alright, there we go. So that's the front end. Cool. How much time have we got? Probably not much. Five. Five minutes. Alright. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess that's... Should we put the rest of it together? I think this is probably enough for this session. Yeah. yeah. I could probably do a little bit more and get yeah. it all completely put back together. Yep. There's a bit more stuff. There's, yeah. Um, yeah. Same for the rear arms and yep. the shocks back on and the gearbox in. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's call this the end of episode two and we'll see you all back together in episode Ooh, three. It's a trilogy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Awesome. All right. Thanks for joining us. Cool. Cheers. <laughs>